Hey, this is Isar with UX in Motion, and this is part two of my Apple TV uh, little training series. And this is what we're gonna be creating here is this camera movement. Now you'll notice that the camera, if I just zoom in, is actually on a circular motion path. And this is how we're getting this sort of unique and very subtle effect here. Before I jump into this though, I just wanna make sure that you've had a chance to watch uh, the part one lesson, the Apple TV part one, where I go into how to set up a 3D scene in After Effects. This is really, really cool, really fun, a lot of good stuff in here. Go check this out. It's on my uxemotion.net slash blog page. And if you have no idea how to use After Effects, but you wanna get started, doing UI animation work, just head over to uxmotion.net, click this, put in your email address over here, and I'll send you a free video series on, a fast start video series on how to get started doing UI animations in After Effects. It's the tool that pretty much everybody uses and it's really easy to get started. Uh, this is a great simple video I wish I had when I first started learning how to do this stuff. And really quick, I am just wanna refresh and uh, you know, just kind of go over a couple UI uh, references here. Mine is based off of this great one that this that uh, Design Moto did on Dribble. I just love this, so I just recreated that for this lesson. I feel like it's a great representation. Um, so I cover how to set that up in the previous lesson, and we're going to be doing the animation in this one. You can see here how cool these 3D scenes are with the parallax. I like this one a lot too. You can just have so much fun with it. Even if it's just simple, just a couple layers, just type in a background, boom. Okay, so if you haven't, you can go ahead and download the files here. So if you just click here, I've included the source files as a download for this tutorial. I don't do it for everyone, but I feel like it's kind of important to have for this one. So just click this button here and just download the After Effects file and the uh, design source files. So you should have something that looks like this already. Um, and if you don't, go grab it or just watch here. Okay, so the idea here is that we're not actually gonna be animating our 3D scene, okay? What this means is that we're gonna be animating the camera around the 3D scene. Now, in the last one, I didn't really cover the camera setup a whole lot, and that's what I'm gonna cover now. So, I'm gonna assume that you've watched the previous one, and we're just gonna jam on this poster comp here. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete my camera and this layer here, and we're just gonna start over from scratch. So yours may look probably like one view, oof, let's do this, active camera, here we go. And um, you know, it is a 3D scene, so if we rotate it, we can actually peer inside of it. There's a light going on, there's a whole bunch of cool things that are happening, but there's no camera, it's not really animating. So this is how we set this up. So if you just control click down here or hit command option shift C for camera, you can pull up a camera. After doing some experimenting with this, I found that the wider angle lenses were great. So anywhere from 15 to 28 is great. Apple doesn't really specify on theirs. And so we're just gonna choose 24 for this one. Fine. And you'll notice a subtle shift in the pixels because I've, ch I've changed my camera lensing here from what the default After Effects viewer is. All right, fair enough. So now let's check this out. So I'm, I'm gonna bust open two views here. So if you just click this little, t this little drop down, go to two views horizontal. And I'm gonna have this view be a custom view. So where these little yellow triangles are, twirl down again, actually, uh, and then where it says active camera, just do a custom view here. Um, I like to do custom view one, is a pretty great working place to work. And I also put this in wireframe mode, it just helps sometimes. So where this little thunderbolt is, you can click that and go wireframe. And now we just have a wireframe schematic. And so the, essentially the idea here is that we want this camera to rotate in a circular motion here while the point of um, the point of interest <laughs> is pointed at our object. Now make sure when you create your camera, you have a two node camera. This won't work on the one node camera, two node only. And this is cool because you could turn on depth of field, you could do all kinds of fun stuff here, but for now we're just gonna do this. So we're gonna add a motion path to this camera. Now we could just draw out a circle using our pen tool, but that's kinda, this isn't quite what we want. I'm gonna show you something way freaking awesomer than that. So the way this works is we first have to create a mask path in After Effects. So I'm gonna make a new solid here. If you just hit Command Y, it doesn't matter what color it is, doesn't matter any of this stuff, hit OK. And you'll see that it's just a little white graphic over our uh, real estate. 
Now I can click the ellipse tool over here and while the layer is selected I can just click and drag and you probably want to do this in the middle of the canvas so if you click this little cross icon here you can go title action safe and it just puts a little check mark right in, in the very middle you can click and drag while you're holding down the uh, command shift key it'll draw a perfect circle constrained from the center of where you're dragging and in doing my tests, I didn't really figure out what was like the optimal circle size. We'll call it like this for now. That's cool. Now, you'll notice like a little mask guy popped up here. And if it didn't, you can just click your layer and tap M for mask, and you can view your mask. Now, if this isn't twirled down, twirl this down. And where it says mask path, click that and hit Command C. You're going to copy that. Now we can just hide this layer. You can just click the eyeball tool. We can untwirl that. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our camera layer here, twirl down our camera, and go to where it says transform, go to our position, and I'm going to move my playback head to the beginning here so that it pace starting from, from this point onward. Make sure position is clicked and hit command V. Okay? Now everything's going to freak out. Don't worry about that. It pastes in these keyframes here. These are called roving keyframes, and these aren't temporal. I won't get into it. They're a little weird. You don't even need to worry about it. The cool thing is, is that you can just grab your uh, end keyframe here and just slide it around, and now uh, you can actually time your animation just by sliding this keyframe. But everything looks like crap, so you're like, dude, I don't care about that right now. Dude, my screen's all messed up. Okay, so this pasted the position data at Z depth right here of zero, which basically screws everything up. So we're just going to move the camera back. This is really easy. Just click your position property to select all the keyframes and make sure you do that. And right where it says 0.0, .0 on your position data, we're going to actually just move that. So we're going to drag it to the left and it's going to pull our camera out. And while you click and drag, a great trick is you can hold down shift key and it zooms out by a factor of 10. Just zoom it out till visually it's where you want it to be. So let's say right about here. I know this isn't the most precise tutorial. We could put, you know, guides in here, you know, and really just dial it in perfect, but I think this is fine for now. So now you can see that we've backed the camera out. We have this little motion path here, and if I change my view here to do like a front view, you'll see that there is just this circular path where the position is. We've anim we've created that, and now if you scrub through, your camera is going to be animating along that path while its point of interest remains locked on our solid right here, on our artwork. And that's basically how you set that up. It's freaking awesome. So if you want to change, so the thing is, if you want to change the amount of distortion here, you can just double click your camera and where it says your preset, just drag it to wherever you want. We can make it crazy wide, we can do 15. Now it'll change the um, the Z depth here. So we just gotta put our move our playback head to the first frame, click position to select all the frames, and just do that trick again, where you move the camera out. And you'll notice this time there's a lot of distortion going on. It's probably way outside the Apple <laughs> spec. So, but that's a cool way that you can actually just change that right there on the fly. If you want a lot less, you can just double click, put this back at like. 50 you'll get very very little or very subtle amount and this just fills up your screen so again you can hit your home key on the keyboard click position scale this out boom hold down shift key until it's where you want it now if you preview this i'm just gonna preview this guy right here you can see that while the camera's moving there's there's a lot less distortion going on there's still movement happening in the parallax but the distortion itself is actually a lot less. So I'm just gonna hide these because they're annoying, turn off my rulers, and we can go back to my one view here. If we wanna do this, put it back on my active camera, change this to off final quality, and it looks like this kicked back on. Turn off that, and there we go. And shift question mark fills your canvas to the screen. You can RAM preview that again and just kind of see what we got. So that's how you set up a 3D camera with a motion path and create this Apple TV effect. Very, very cool stuff. Drop me a comment, let me know what you think. Um, thanks for watching, and if you haven't, go ahead and sign up for my mailing list so I can send you these free videos because they're badass and I think you'll love them, what I have coming up. Okay, have a good one.